released in 1996 and kicking off the fifth generation of consoles was Alien Trilogy from Acclaim Entertainment. Acclaim, also known as Probe Entertainment, also known as Iguana Entertainment for a short while, but this is not Turok, this is Alien Trilogy. This game saw release on PlayStation 1, Sega Saturn, and later MS-DOS. Now, the Alien franchise had seen several individual movie tie-ins as far back as the Atari 2600 for the original 1979 movie Alien, but this game loosely covers the entire trilogy thus far, in the form of a tense and atmospheric first-person shooter. As Ellen Ripley in her Alien 3 get-up, I know it doesn't make sense chronologically, but whatever, you return to LV-426 to clear out three areas loosely based on the movies. Each area is just over ten levels long and ends with a satisfying boss fight against an alien queen. Haha, <laughs> cool. You begin in a Terran colony as an alien, then move to a prison complex, Alien 3, and finally return to the H.R. Giger-inspired Bone Ship, or Derelict, where the Xenomorph was first encountered in the original movie. Like the many Doom clones before it, Alien Trilogy focuses on combat and exploration, but what sets this game apart is its unique and effective emphasis on atmosphere. The environments are very dark and foreboding and do a good job capturing the spirit of the movies, the entire uh, Alien universe, even with these early visuals. Enemies will attack from out of the darkness, and while the AI isn't brilliant, it is very aggressive and hard to hit. And if you try to run and gun like traditional Doom clones, you will be overwhelmed and killed off quickly, especially in the more claustrophobic later levels. You'll face the eponymous alien in all its forms, from face huggers to adult warriors, as well as the dog or ox forms from Alien 3. Corrupted humans and synthetics will also show up gunning for you, so you'll have to stay on your toes. And speaking of, if you want to keep your toes, watch out for the alien blood. At least you'll have franchise firepower to fight back, with the flamethrower, pulse rifle, and smart gun all making appearances here, although the pulse rifle pretty much becomes your go-to friend through most of the game. Exploring every level for secrets will help to keep your supplies up, and Alien Trilogy adds a nice auto-mapper to every level, which points out areas of interest. It doesn't spell out every collectible, but it helps to keep you from going through the levels and clicking on every single wall like most other Doom clones. The only exception is the final area, the Derelict, which features some seemingly solid walls which you can still travel through. It's a rare blemish on an otherwise fun-to-explore game. Control-wise, Alien Trilogy is a bit too early for modern twin-stick analog controls, but it has the next best thing, which is mapping strafe to the shoulder buttons. I won't lie, vertical aiming is awkward, but with most combat on the horizontal plane, it feels surprisingly natural. And again, you can strafe around enemies all day, which is... that helps immensely. Still, the slower movement and occasional limited platforming will make you very appreciative of how far first-person shooter controls have come on consoles. Getting back to that atmosphere, it would be remiss not to mention the iconic CD audio soundtrack. It wasn't necessarily like the movies, but it had plenty of lush and moody background tracks, and it's still a great listen all these years later. The soundtrack was done by Steven Root, who also worked on music for games such as Forsaken, Revolt, and Die Hard Trilogy, and he later became director of audio for series such as Burnout, Codemasters F1, and the Dirt series. And hey, that CD storage was also used to treat players to a few cutscenes throughout the game. It's primitive by modern standards, sure, but this is the era where the competition was the Nintendo 64. So tossing a few pre-rendered movies to keep the story moving was cool in my book anyway. All in all, Alien Trilogy is a surprisingly good first-person shooter and Doom clone. It manages to put a more effective focus on atmosphere, which really helps to sell the Alien universe. It takes just enough liberties to make a very fun game while keeping all the fundamentals in place. Now that said, this is not a perfect retro game. The exploration and navigation is fun, but it doesn't always work. 
There will be times when a locker or door will show up on the auto mapper as interactive, but you won't be able to trigger them unless you hit them at a really odd angle or by experimenting with different weapons. There are also a few instances with lifts or steps that can only be used one time, and if you miss them or hit them too early, you might miss out on enough of the stage to hit your stage completion goal. The worst though, yeah, is the final area of the game. The bone ship has absurdly confusing levels. The fake walls, oh, the fake walls, can make navigating a nightmare, and hidden lifts or chutes often shovel you into ambushes with almost no room to maneuver. It's old school difficulty, it's cheap, and it requires you to memorize these levels so you can prepare for the worst. Trust me, you will need to stockpile your grenades for the last levels. Most of the game, though, is really enjoyable. You just have to realize that the final stretch will take some trial and error. As far as the difference between the ports, this is interesting. Usually, the Saturn ports of multi-platform games would simply run slower and have noticeably bad transparency effects. But Alien Trilogy is, well, odd. On the PlayStation, the game has a much more atmospheric look. It really makes use of the PS1's lighting effects, with flickering and colored lighting really showing up throughout the levels. The problem, though, is that the levels can be oppressively dark, at least on modern flat screens. The Saturn version lacks the lighting effects, but it actually runs and looks a bit cleaner, which is rare. You won't have those dithering effects on the PS1, and you get a cleaner, longer draw distance. It's ultimately a toss-up, and obviously the PlayStation ecosystem is worlds easier to get into, but it's worth noting a rare instance when the Saturn makes a good, or at least unique, showing next to its more popular counterpart. This had been on my backlog for ages since I first saw it all those years ago on PlayStation 1, and I had way more fun than I thought I would playing through it just now. This was a super fun game that I'm so glad I got to play even all these years later. I hope you enjoyed the review as much as I enjoyed making it, and if you'd like to help my channel grow, would you please like and subscribe? Thank you so much everyone, always, and remember to keep going. You are worth it. Perfect! Perfect!